3D Grumpy Mood Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you a design that is very appropriate for this whole situation that we're in right now and it is Grumpy from Snow White and it just says mood because I feel like a lot of us are kind of in that mindset right now where we're just sort of like, I know this one is for sure, right? Just kind of grumpy yeah i thought so so this design is kind of a funny version of what i think is the general consensus of the of the universe right now so if you like it as much as i do and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well begin with an overlay of a milky white acrylic i know i've said this before but for any of you who are curious the reason i think that a milky white or a light color background is the best is because like a milky white or a nude for something 3d and extreme like this you really want that 3D image to really stand out. And so a kind of invisible background such as the milky white or a cover pink is going to just work the best. The other great thing with a milky white is you don't need to encapsulate it because the color itself is plenty strong. So after you've done your overlay, you can file the nail into shape with your e-file, starting out with a coarse bit to remove any bulk and then using a finer bit just to smooth out the surface texture to make it easy to work on top of. I also like to use my e-file to clean up the free edge of coffin shapes because I think that works really easy. Then I'm going to begin sculpting Sir Grumpy's face with a tan color acrylic. So just begin and have your image next to you whenever you're working on a character like this and try not to freak yourself out too much ahead of time. I know that it can be very, I don't know, disconcerting to be thinking that you're going to be working on a character. The funny thing with working on a character is they are more difficult simply for the fact that they're recognizable and if it doesn't look quite right, people are going to look at it and think, hmm, that doesn't look quite right. Whereas if you're just, you know, making a cat, it's a cat. Not nearly as specific and all the details don't have to be exactly on point. But if you're working on a character, you really have to be more cautious to make sure that all your details are as close to perfect as possible so that nobody gets that, hmm, what's wrong with this face feeling? Even if it's you, somebody else may not get it, but... You yourself may get that, hmm, this looks weird. So, any hoozle, we've got the face done. Then you can go through and you can add his hat. So his hat is more of like a reddish brownish color acrylic, not quite so light as the tan of his face. His shirt, which as you can see I added, is red. You may also notice I did not take his shirt all the way up to his jawline. The reason for that is because he has his beard that comes down, so there's no need to have the red acrylic go all the way up like that. Adding a little bit more hat acrylic on the side. I like to take and lay, if I'm doing something next to a different piece of 3D art that's already sculpted like that, I like to lay it a little bit away from that other bit of acrylic and then push it up. I think that gives you cleaner lines and trying to set it down right where it's supposed to be and the end and then moving it around, but I think it's just easier to sort of slide it into place. With the right acrylic, I'm going to be filling in his beard. Because that red acrylic underneath is not 100% set, it's close. And it seems like it's 100% set, but the acrylic still has a little bit of, I don't know, play with it where it can bleed the color. My beard turned slightly pink. If you were doing this as part of a set, I'd probably wait at his beard and go and work on a different nail for a minute and then come back and add the beard so that you don't have to worry about that and let that red acrylic have a little bit longer to just really set up so it doesn't bleed. If it does bleed like mine did, it isn't the end of the world. There's a little bit of paint somewhere in your set, I'm sure, that in your collection of stuff that you can fix it up with. And you're also going to add his shoulder. And then with a slightly peachier, pinkier color of acrylic, we're going to be adding his nose. So up until this point, he didn't have a nose. He just had a forehead and a brow, brow line and a little bit of a mouth, cheekbones, but no nose. So we're gonna add his nose with that peachy color, pat it out a little bit, clean up the lines and then make sure that you add that. So he's got the nostril on the side. He has a very big bulbous nose, so it doesn't look like your traditional nose that you have in mind. Add a little nostril, give it a little bit more definition. And just keep monitoring the image of it to make sure that it does look how you want it to look in the end. It's sometimes easy to get carried away with these designs and not have the vision of what you want in the end there still and all of a sudden you're looking at it and you're like wait a second how did this thing get so crooked so you just it's best just to take a little breather moment every once in a while after each stage i guess of the design and just make sure that it looks right because it's easier to fix something if you only have it half done than if you have the whole thing done and then you are like oh man you gotta take it all off so that's just something to keep in mind so i'm going to add his little hand with the same color as i started with for his face 
and then just a little bit more of the red acrylic for the rest of his sleeve. And that's there. The one thing I like to do when I'm sculpting a character is I like to have several images of the character available because you'll notice that sometimes the picture that you like the best or the pose you like the best, maybe the image quality isn't the greatest. So if you grab a different photo that maybe you don't like the pose as much, but you can clearly see all the details, you can apply that detail knowledge to the other pose and you can get the result exactly how you want it or maybe you want to combine a couple poses or switch up the clothing or something. So it's easier to grab all of those images before you start working. So make sure you have plenty of information and plenty of reference photos before you pick up your acrylic brush. But then with slightly diluted black paint, I'm going to go through and add all of the details on Mr. Grumpy, just like so. I know that some artists like to use gel paint more than acrylic paint, and there are benefits of using gel paint, you have more time to blend it, especially if you're doing a gradient. Um, you have a little bit more of a stickiness to the paint, which sometimes works in your favor and sometimes does not. So it depends on the project you're working on. The other benefit with gel paint is when you're ready for it to be, you know, dried and immobile, you just throw it in your lap. Whereas acrylic paint, you might have to wait for it to dry or it might dry too soon. So it depends on you know, the person, as I said, the other benefit with acrylic paint, especially just craft acrylic paint, is it's non-toxic. As you can see, I stuck it on my skin. It doesn't matter if it gets on your skin, which, you know, sometimes, you know, it happens. I use my thumb as a palette with acrylic paint all the time. So after you have all of your details of Grumpy pretty much started, I'm going to be taking black paint, the same black paint as I was using a moment ago, and I'm going to be writing Mood, M-O-O-D, right along the cuticle area of the nail with a period because you know that's all that needs to be said is just mood. Make these lines a little bit thicker than you would normally because you're actually starting with the outline and you're painting the letters and you can do this when you're painting characters or other things too. Make like a bubble shape of, the, of what you want it to be and then fill in the finer details. That's a technique that I used a lot when I was first starting to paint more detailed artwork on nails as I did it that way. And then I'm going to let that black paint dry and just leave it there for a second. And I'm going to take some red paint and highlight his clothes. This is a brighter shade of red than my, um, my 3D liquid and powder acrylic was that I was working with before. And then I'm going to take that same red. I'm going to be filling in those letters. So as I said, what you did before with the black is like the outlines or the shadowing of the letters. So when you fill them in now, you don't want to completely cover up the black paint that you started with. You want to leave just kind of like a ghost line around it. And then apply a layer of gel sealer over the background and cure it and matte top coat over Mr. Grumpy. And that is it. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. I just think it's so funny and appropriate. And here's a Melody Minutes to cheer you up. Row, row, row your boat. Gently down the ping. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Life is but a Thank you guys so much for watching. She's so cute and she loves to sing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and maybe gave you a little smile and I'll see you next time. Bye.